Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to talk about the association between eating citrus fruits and developing skin cancer. If you're new to this channel, my name is Chris and I'm a doctor working in dermatology based in the UK. And on this channel, I share my life experiences and journey towards becoming a consultant dermatologist in the UK. And today I'm going to talk about a slightly controversial subject. Does eating citrus fruits, uh, specifically oranges, lead to skin cancer? The reason why I'm doing this is because recently there has been a study published in the British Journal of Dermatology, which if you don't know, is one of the highly respected and renowned journals in dermatology. The authors in this study basically concluded that citrus fruits consumption, specifically oranges and orange juice, has been linked to developing skin cancer, specifically melanomas. And this is a more serious form of skin cancer um, commonly found in the UK. So the authors concluded that people who had two or more servings of citrus products a day were 60% more at risk of developing melanomas compared to those who did not have any consumption. And those who drank orange juices or ate oranges were more at risk to those who didn't. The idea behind this is due to a substance called sorolin. Now, sorolin is a substance that is naturally found in a lot of um, citrus products, such as oranges. We often use sorolin alongside with light therapy to help treat certain skin conditions such as eczema and psoriasis. Sorolin helps to make the skin more sensitive to light, thereby making it easier for the skin to be treated. However, there is a theoretical risk of UV damage in the long run and thereby making the skin more prone to getting skin cancer. In essence, from this study, this basically means that the more citrus products you eat, the more likely you get skin cancer. So does this mean we need to avoid eating all citrus fruits altogether? How much is too much? Before I jump into my own conclusions about this study, I think I would like to first summarize the study itself, how it was done, so that you could make your own judgments yourself. So firstly, this was an observational cohort study of the British population. What this means is that the participants are recruited from the UK. The researchers recruited participants using the UK Biobank. So this UK Biobank is a large-scale biomedical database for research. In this UK Biobank, they recruited over 500,000 participants um, aged between 40 and 69 from 2006 to 2010. The researchers then asked participants to fill in 24-hour recall questionnaires on their citrus consumption over the past 24 hours. Some of the questions asked were, how many oranges, fresh, frozen, canned, did you have? How many glasses, cartons, 250 ml orange juice did you drink yesterday? They then sent the questionnaires four more times and averaged the total citrus consumption using the answers obtained from the five questionnaires. Following this, they then checked to see if the participants then developed melanomas using national registries such as hospital records and GP databases. The authors looked at the association of citrus consumption and the risk of developing melanomas. The citrus fruits that they looked at included grapefruits, um, oranges, as well as satsumas. The authors also took into account other risk factors for melanoma, such as the skin type, sun exposure, BMI, and smoking status, and tried to account for them so as to prevent any confounding to the data analyzed. One of the strengths of this study is that this is the largest cohort study ever done comparing citrus fruit consumption and the risk of melanomas. They included participants from all over the UK and analyzed data from over 190,000 people. Having a large sample size makes the data more generalizable to the UK population. The authors also had a clearly defined research question, which is always helpful when doing a clinical trial. They use appropriate methodology and appropriate statistics when analyzing the data. So here are the things that made me skeptical with this study. One of the things was the way researchers assessed citrus fruit consumption. What they did was they asked participants to recall and state how many fruits they had consumed over the past 24 hours. This brings about recall bias. Recall bias happens when you are relying on participants' memory for data collection. There is a risk that participants may not fully remember past events, or worse, they may subconsciously falsify information which make the whole data 
inaccurate for analysis. The way we overcome recall bias is to ensure that when we are designing a study, we don't rely on participants' memory for our data collection. For example, we can design a study in which we divide the participants into various groups depending on the amount of citrus fruit consumption. The participants are only allowed the amount of citrus fruits in the group that they are allocated in. However, doing so is extremely costly and simply unpractical to achieve. So the next point I'd like to raise is that these participants were recruited from the UK Biobank. This is all and well, but did you know that even though over 500,000 people um, met the inclusion criteria, only around 210,000 participants completed at least one 24-hour recall questionnaire. This is less than 50% of the total number. What this means is that it might not be representative of the whole UK population. The people in the trial may be people who are more health conscious and so may be more willing to engage with healthcare survey questionnaires than people who don't. Also, the researchers excluded um, patients of darker skin types, such as black and minority ethnic groups. And so this means that the results cannot be translated to patients of darker skin types. The other thing is that there is missing data in the trial as well. Not all participants completed all five questionnaires. Now, what we don't know is how much missing data there is in the trial because the authors don't really tell us in the paper. What we do know is that any missing data is left blank and the authors only analysed the data that was available. My last point is that the authors were not completely clear in their terminology. They used servings to determine the amount of citrus fruits participants consume. But what exactly is one serving? Also, does the size and weight of fruit matter? What about the location where it came from? Different places may have different methods of agricultural processing, which means that the, the fruits may have different levels of sorolin in them. Now, all these factors may influence the validity of the results. And so it makes it a bit more difficult for me to believe completely what the results show. In conclusion, there have been other studies which investigated the association between citrus consumption and melanoma risk. However, the results have always been quite mixed. I think any study that looks into dietary habits is often quite difficult and challenging to perform due to various factors that I've talked about early in this video. We know that eating fruits is generally quite good for one's general health. So it's often quite difficult to put a blanket statement saying, let's not eat any fruits because it's going to cause skin cancer. Personally, I think, even though there is a theoretical risk of skin cancer from eating oranges and citrus fruits, the risk is relatively low. In my opinion, I think the advantages of having a balanced diet, one with lots of fruits and vegetables, greatly outweigh any potential risks and disadvantages. Of course, I'm not saying we should eat fruits in abundance, but rather in moderation. More studies can be conducted in the future to see if they show similar risk profiles with citrus fruit consumption. But personally, I probably wouldn't change my dietary habits just based on one study alone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this is educational and informative. I certainly had fun um, making this video and analyzing the paper. If you're interested in me making similar videos like this in the future, please drop a comment down below to let me know. I will also attempt to do an update for my MRCP video as it seems to have garnered a lot of views on this. Please also like, share and subscribe to my channel as it will mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching once again. See you next time. Bye-bye.